Sarah Plain and Tall, Chapter 3. Sarah came in the spring. She came through green grass fields that bloomed with Indian paintbrush, red and orange, and blue-eyed grass. Papa got up early for the long day's trip to the train and back. He brushed his hair so slick and shiny that Caleb laughed. He wore a clean blue shirt and a belt instead of suspenders. He fed and watered the horses, talking to them as he hitched them up to the wagon. Old Bess, calm and kind, Jack, wild-eyed, reaching over to nip Bess on the neck. Clear day, Bess, said Papa, rubbing her nose. Settle down, Jack, he leaned his head on Jack. And then Papa drove off along the dirt road to fetch Sarah. Papa's new wife, maybe, maybe our new mother. Gophers ran back and forth across the road, stopping to stand up and watch the wagon. Far off in the field, a woodchuck ate and listened, ate and listened. Caleb and I did our chores without talking. We shoveled out the stalls and laid down new hay. We fed the sheep. We swept and straightened and carried wood and water, and then our chores were done. Caleb pulled on my shirt. Is my face clean, he asked. Can my face be too clean? He looked alarmed. No, your face is clean, but not too clean, I said. Caleb slipped his hand into mine as we stood on the porch, watching the road. He was afraid. Will she be nice, he asked, like Maggie. Sarah will be nice, I told him. How far away is Maine, he asked. You know how far, far away by the sea. Will Sarah bring some sea, he asked. No, you cannot bring the sea. The sheep ran in the field and far off, the cows moved slowly to the pond like turtles. Will she like us, asked Caleb very softly. I watched a marsh hawk wheel down behind the barn. He looked up at me. Of course she will like us, he answered his own question. We are nice, he added, making me smile. We waited and watched. I rocked on the porch and Caleb rolled a marble on the wood floor, back and forth, back and forth. The marble was blue. We saw the dust from the wagon first, rising above the road, above the heads of Jack and Old Bess. Caleb climbed up onto the porch roof and shaded his eyes. A bonnet, he cried. I see a yellow bonnet. The dogs came out from under the porch, ears up, their eyes on the cloud of dust bringing Sarah. The wagon passed the fenced field and the cows and sheep looked up too. It rounded the windmill and the barn and the windbreak of Russian olive that mama had planted long ago. Nick began to bark, then Lottie, and the wagon clattered into the yard and stopped by the steps. Hush, said Papa to the dogs, and it was quiet. Sarah stepped down from the wagon, a cloth bag in her hand. She reached up and took off her yellow bonnet, smoothing back her brown hair into a bun. She was plain and tall. Did you bring some sea, cried Caleb beside me. Something from the sea, said Sarah, smiling, and me. She turned and lifted a black case from the wagon, and seal too. Carefully, she opened the case, and seal, gray with white feet, stepped out. Lottie lay down her, hand, her head on her paws, staring. Nick leaned down to sniff. Then he lay down too. The cat will be good in the barn, said Papa, for mice. Sarah smiled. She will be good in the house too. Sarah took Caleb's hand, then mine. Her hands were large and rough. She gave Caleb a shell, a moon snail, she called it, that was curled and smelled of salt. The gulls fly high and drop the shells on the rocks below, she told Caleb. When the shell is broken, they eat what is inside. That is very smart, said Caleb. For you, Anna, said Sarah, a sea stone. And she gave me the smoothest and whitest stone I had ever seen. The sea washes over and over and around the stone, rolling it until it is round and perfect. That is very smart too, said Caleb. He looked up at Sarah. We do not have the sea here. Sarah turned and looked out over the plains. No, she said, there is no sea here, but the land rolls a little like the sea. My father did not see her look, but I did. And I, I knew that Caleb had seen it too. Sarah was not smiling. Sarah was already lonely. In a month's time, the preacher might come to marry Sarah and Papa, and a month was a long time, time enough for her to change her mind and leave us. Papa took Sarah's bags inside where her room was ready with a quilt on the bed and blue flax dried in a vase on the, on the night table. 
Seal stretched and made a small cat sound. I watched her circle the dogs and sniff the air. Caleb came out and stood beside me. When will we sing, he whispered. I shook my head, turning the white stone over and over in my hand. I wished everything was as perfect as the stone. I wished that Papa and Caleb and I were perfect for Sarah. I wished we had a sea of our own.